say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr. I move that the Haranui Kaikoura Earthquake Emergency Relief Bill be reported to the House by 1 December 2016 and that the committee have the authority to meet at any time while the House is sitting, except during oral questions and during any evening on a day in which there has been a sitting of the House despite standing order 1941B and C. Can you speak as the question is that the motion be agreed to? Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. <coughs> the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I move that the Haranui, uh, sorry, Mr. No, Speaker. No, civil defence. Yeah. Speaker, I move that the Civil Defence Emergency Management Act 2016 uh, be now read a first time. The Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, this bill effectively amends a bill that was passed through the House with unanimous support just four days before this event occurred. And one of the features of the bill is that it um, brings into existence a thing called a transition period, which means that after the state of civil emergency has largely dissipated uh, in, in an emergency sense, there is a need to continue with recovery. Uh, and while that might take some years, there is a transition to that recovery as well. So what this enables is the establishment uh, of the transition period and of transition managers uh, um, under the Civil Defence Emergency Management Act Amendment Bill 2016. We've effectively brought a provision forward that was going to come into effect on the 14th of May of 2017, uh, and this bill would bring it into effect on the uh, 14th of, uh, sorry, the 28th of November 2016. Mr. Speaker, I don't think I need to speak too much more about that because these matters have been well discussed by the House, uh, and in fact have. Um, uh, received unanimous support, as I said. But I do want to talk about uh, a new little aspect to this bill, which uh, was considered broadly by the cross-party discussions of the last uh, week or so, and that is to, to give the power to um, uh, civil defence controllers and recovery managers uh, to require building assessments. It's just, uh, un unfortunately, Mr Speaker, a gap in our law, but unacceptable that uh, building owners don't always have to assess their building after a big earthquake, and their obligations stop at the uh, health and safety legislation which requires them to provide a safe workplace uh, for either employees or tenants. So what this bill does is say, well, if uh, one of those managers has a reason uh, to request uh, an assessment of the building, then the assessment must be done. There is an appeal against that, but the expectation would be that in that circumstance, uh, responsible landlords will act responsibly. And I've got to say, there is no uh, particular group of landlords or others that uh, have prompted this. It is simply the gap in the law that has prom uh, prompted it. And I, I would note that there was one very prominent uh, landlord in Wellington uh, who said that he had, of course, inspected his buildings, had engineering reports, but did not uh, believe he was required to uh, hand them to the council. I think, sir, what uh, happened is that there was a protocol with the engineering profession that they would hand them on, uh, but it's, it's just not clear. So what we're doing here is making it absolutely clear that if it's asked for, it needs to be provided. So I, I don't want to sound like we're coming after landlords at all. That's not the case. It's just uh, a gap in the law that we're filling in. Uh, there were a number of concerns raised about this at the uh, cross-party forum, as you'd expect. And I think the wording that we've finally uh, settled on is going to uh, ensure that we do get sensible behaviour around this. First, there are tests that uh, would require that it's in the public interest and proportionate to the circumstances. So if we had a minor shake here in Wellington, uh, where it's quite clearly not caused the sort of damage that you get with something that's much more major, as big or as big as the shake on the uh, 14th of November, uh, then, of course, uh, you wouldn't expect the same degree of uh, response. Secondly, there are some requirements that decision-makers must have regard to whether the structure or type of structure that they're looking at may, in the circumstances, pose a risk to the safety or the life or 
uh, of, of individuals or to other property. So we don't want the situation, sir, where the local community hall, which is used periodically, is a single-storey timber building. This was raised by uh, the New Zealand First Party, and I think appropriately, uh, ends up having to go to a committee that's cash-strapped to find a lot of money to tell them what they can know at a glance. And Mr Speaker, it is therefore a bill that uh, is necessary in the circumstances, uh, and I think uh, I would uh, simply like to say I appreciate the, the way in which that's been uh, dealt with by that cross-party forum. Uh, it has left us in a very comfortable position about bringing forward legislation that is already law, albeit not quite timely at the moment. The question is that the motion be agreed to.